E aí, gente, tudo bem? Eu sou o Fernando Prado. Tá começando o podcast Conversas Rádio Disney. Tenho certeza que os nossos convidados de hoje, você já viu aqui no título, claro. E tenho certeza absoluta que você já dançou muito ao som deles. E a gente tem a honra de receber aqui. We are honored to have here in our studios, Sophie Tucker. Hi there, guys. Oi. How are you? Hi. I know that you get just arrived from a, a, a trip, so you must be a little bit tired, I guess. I'm, I'm not sure. No, it's okay. We're energized. Yeah. We are. <laughs> we're, we're excited to be here with you. Yeah, great, great. Okay, so let's start with Sophie. Even though you were born in Germany, you discovered this love, this deep love for Brazil and Brazilian culture, right? And um, tell us uh, how this love began. Comecei com a música porque eu estava escutando a muito música brasileira e eu apaixonei pela música e aí eu aprendi a língua e depois disso eu decidi de uh, me mudar para aqui. Eu fiz um intercâmbio no Rio e apaixonei de novo com a música, com a cultura, com a língua. E depois eu encontrei um poeta que se chama Chacal e a gente combinou para trabalhar juntos. E aí eu encontrei o Tucker e a gente fez música juntos e eu... Uh, Ainda estava fazendo música com os poemas do Chacal. Então a gente começou a fazer música com os poemas do Chacal. E aí, aí agora é, é crescendo ainda todos os dias mais. So, so the, 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 the project came after your uh, Brazilian experience? Yeah. Oh, so great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is yeah, the only... first song that we ever made together was uh -huh. Drinky. Okay. Você... Wow. No, Gosta quando eu okay. falo em português ou em inglês? Você decide, it's up to you. It's tá up bom. to you. But, 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 but the first time was what, 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 what this, what this, 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 this track, right? No? Oh, yeah. I was just asking tá. if, uh, if you could speak in English just for him to understand. Tá bom. <laughs> oh, tá it's bom. okay. I don't mind. Yeah? Okay. I think it's funny. <laughs> I always make faces at her when she's speaking Portuguese because I just sit here like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> But okay. I know the story. This is what she said. This I know, is what she said. I know exactly what she said. <laughs> Okay, so tell us, this, uh, the first experience was uh, with the uh, Drinky, uh, dr drink the, the song. The yeah, that was the first song that we ever made together. And it was in Portuguese. This and it's, so a, it's a poem by Chacal. Great, great. Well, and you have b tons of uh, uh, Brazilian references like melodies, artists, and poets. And what are other inspirations from uh, Brazilian culture that you could share with us? Well, now <laughs> there's a lot of uh, dance. Dance moves, I would say, inspired by Brazil. Really? I'm still learning samba. It's uh. like really hard. But um, then there's just like, I would say, the general spirit of like really caring about music, really caring yeah. about partying, celebrating, <laughs> like being together. It's just, it's something that is so important to Brazilians yeah. and it's so important to us. Obviously, it's what we're all about. Yeah, there's a positivity in Brazil that is like... An extra amount of positive, I think, <laughs> than everywhere else in the world. Uh, there's yeah. some 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 extra amazing thing in all Brazilians' brains, I think, yeah. that keeps them more positive than everyone else. <laughs> I guess so. And uh, we love that, and we try to always be positive in message in our music. But as for these Brazilian experiences, you don't look like the one who like who is just learning samba right now. You took her yourself. Yeah, but he learned the quadragino. Yeah. No way. Yeah, yeah I can I shake way. my ass better than her. <laughs> This is so great. This is so great. Are you really learning the quadragino? Yeah. 100%. Oh, my goodness. This is so great. Not learning. <laughs> learned. Uh, wow. He's a master already. <laughs> Now we're going to have to get you to do it. Yeah, I guess so. Trying, yeah. to, trying, to, trying to teach Sophie, but He's it's a lost cause. it. So recently, you guys released a new version of Vitas Cases, which is so great by, by Jusons, right? In which you have a more present uh, beat and mix is in your own style. But at the same time, you guys uh, kind of uh, uh, preserve the, the, the essence of music, the, the, the original one, right? How, how do your, uh, does your creative process work in this? Are you just uh, feel free to create? You know, it's like, okay, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Yeah, this one was definitely one of the we were just gonna do whatever we want to do situations because, yeah. like, it was almost unintentional, really. I yeah. was just Sophie was loved playing the song on the guitar, and then I heard her playing it on the guitar, and I then went and listened to the song, and then I thought to myself, 
oh, I could remix this and that would be really fun. So then I started working on it. And then I went in and showed Sophie to surprise her that I was working on this song that she loves. And then eventually we came back to it and thought, you know, you should write a verse on it. And like, let's maybe, you know, introduce it to a bunch of new people. And I guess, it, I guess it might be interesting to work in another language because uh, for you guys, it's like, it's, it's, it's sound, right? I mean, it's sound. But before uh, the, the meaning... It's sound, right? So it, it must be for interesting, me, right? For me, it just totally is like another instrument. For Sophie, I mean, she definitely thinks about lyrics more. I think she, and obviously speaks Portuguese. So for her, I don't know exactly, but for me, yeah, it's definitely I would say sound. For me, I have such a different association with it because it's not my first language. And so, like, and, and because I'm not as like picky about vocabulary, you know, I, I, I do think I care more about sound whereas in English like I wouldn't say a word wrong because I know it would be wrong but in Portuguese like sometimes I don't know that the grammar is wrong but it yeah. sounds better with an a than with an o so then I just do it That's and it. then and like because of that I think I feel a little more free sometimes even when writing like I'll write the melody in Portuguese and then I'll write lyrics later in English yeah. because it's easier for me to make melodies in Portuguese because I'm not thinking so hard about what I'm saying. Okay. Because it's like more, yeah, it's just a totally different part it of my brain. It flows better too. It flows better. I it's think, it's I a think really it, musical language. Like that's part of why itself. I love it so much. But, yeah. and, but, and, and you can, can sing so fast. This one, uh, <laughs> Veneno, for example. Yeah. My goodness, I'm, I'm native and I cannot sing, <laughs> you know, I cannot sing the, the, the lyrics, you know. It's difficult. Wow. <laughs> Muito difícil. É muito. Wow, my goodness. <laughs> So, from Geosons to Bomba Stereo, for example, is another uh, collab you had, right? You got a ton of international collabs going on. Language plays a big role, just like we said. And what challenges do you face when you just, like, go to another mix, to a new mix or to a new collab, for example? Hmm. I think every song is different. Every experience with different artists is different. I think you always have to try to represent both artists so that everyone's comfortable and like representing what they stand for and who they are and what their listeners and fans expect and want. I think that's always sort of an interesting thing because when we're, we're pretty open with trying things and different styles of music and I think not everyone is always like that. Sometimes people stay in more of a lane, specifically a genre. So I think in a way... A collaboration opens that up because you feel less like it reflects only on you. So let's say we're making a song with a jazz musician or, a, you know, it doesn't have to sound exactly only like a Sophie Tucker dance track. Yeah. If maybe it reflects on if it reflects on us a little less, it almost gives you more freedom sometimes. Mm -hmm. But you have to make sure everyone's happy, which can always be tricky. And talking about these uh, uh, different uh, genres, is there any genre that you guys want to, to explore uh, anytime soon, someday, that you haven't already, of course? We're exploring some yes. new ones. <laughs> yes. We're yeah. exploring some new ones on uh, this new album that we're just wrapping up right now. Okay. That is very exciting to both of us. Yeah, Aww. there's a, there's like some funk references in there that are really, really fun. It seems like they're just like holding information, you know, guys from know. Disney, from Radio Disney Brazil. They're like holding information. They know a lot about this, you know, but they cannot, they cannot say right now. Well, we know all about it. Uh, you know all about it. They're creating the, the, the album, of course. So you told me that Sophie Tucker came before, after this Brazilian experience, but how, how did it happen for real? How did Sophie Tucker happen? Yeah. So we met uh, at the end of college okay. and at the time, like I was making basically like MPB music and mm. he was a DJ and we joined forces and we started making music together and trying to figure it out. And then when we really figured it out, Drinky was the first song that we ever made. Um, yeah. We basically met randomly because we were both asked to do a, an event mm -hmm. and I was asked to play, you know, with a little jazz trio and Tucker was the DJ at the same party. Yeah. And this was in our senior year in college. Okay. And then we graduated and uh, I wanted to pursue this as a career and Sophie wasn't sure mm -hmm. and it was sort of fun to try to convince her she was planning on moving back to brazil actually okay and she was gonna teach yoga and music 
And um, luckily, I convinced her not to. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, one day you'll go back to Brazil, I promise. I was like, okay. It better happen, and here we are. <laughs> it better happen. Now we're here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all the time. <laughs> and now when you guys first started, uh, what were the, uh, the main challenges, you know, that you faced, you know, like creating el electronic music or music mm. that you want to do? Is there any, what was some, you know, difficulties, some hiccups? Some yeah. I would say one of the challenges actually was not music related at all, which was, I feel like, we were both really into music and we just wanted to make music. And then we were like, oh my gosh, like nowadays, okay, artists also like, they post on social media. Yeah. I, I was so uncomfortable and so like, I didn't like to post pictures of myself. Like I just didn't like the process. That was really challenging to overcome um, and just like give it less, I don't know, overthinking. Uh, and then we're also, you know, It took uh, some time, I think, for us to figure out how to work together and how to like not take things personally. But it it wasn't. It I felt really organic. So. No, no, like as in as in like as in I would come up I with an idea, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and he'd be like, "Oh no, I don't like that." And it, I think over time, I realized like if he doesn't like it, it has nothing to do with him not respecting me as an artist or creator. Or it's just not liking the idea. And so as soon as we were able to really freely be like, nope, don't like it, don't like it, don't like it, don't like it, then we could move so much quicker and be so much more creative. Because then when we do like it, we can also run with it. And like, I feel like the process of like getting to know each other and just talk really freely and openly and be really, really brutally honest about everything. Yeah. Like, it's not that that came hard, but I think it was an adjustment. And then once we were able to be really honest in our communication, I think, like, things happened easier and quicker. And we got better at making music. And when uh, uh, the first track came, you know, it's like, and uh, became this really big hit, I guess things got m more serious, probably. So, uh, probably you guys said, okay, so now, yeah, this is what we're going to do. We're going to... Yeah? yeah, yeah, basically. It was it was when Drinky got uh, an Apple commercial. It was the first thing that happened. Wow. We were living sort of on friends' couches in New York City, and we got an email saying your song. Uh, we want your song for an Apple commercial, and we thought it was like a joke. We thought like a friend was making up an email and sending us. <laughs> and this was before we had you know m we didn't have managers. We didn't have lawyers we didn't have any team really uh -huh. and uh we quickly went and got a lawyer and it <laughs> it was real and yeah. uh that was sort of the first moment when we said oh this could be real we could uh -huh. do this you know we can pay rent with this like this is this is cool yeah. and uh, you know our parents were like oh Maybe this could work, <laughs> you know? It was one of those moments. You won't starve. <laughs> yeah, for now. <laughs> for now, at least for the next couple of years. Yeah. And if you could give some uh, of musicians who are just like starting right now some advice because you guys went through this process, what, what, what could you say to them? We always say a really similar thing, and I really stand by it every time, which is make the music you want to hear make music for you make the music that turns you on and lights you up Great. because if you make music for other people it, the other people aren't <laughs> are, are also not going to like it like it has mm -hmm. to really resonate with you yes, and i so. and trust that there will be other people who will resonate with it because of that Great. Tucker, I'm sure you're just like tired of, of answering this question, but you're a basketball player. Uh, I love talking about yeah? it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And uh, were you good at it? I was good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And tell us why you got, why you just like decided to, to let it go, you know? Like so, yeah, I was in college playing basketball and I ended up getting sick and had to leave school for a year. And oh, for a year. Yeah, I was in bed for like seven months. Wow. And that's actually, I didn't make music actually until then. So I, I wanted to be productive but didn't really have energy to do anything. So I s watched YouTube and taught myself how to m produce music on the computer. And I just spent like all day from wake up to sleep just kind of obsessing over this. Mm -hmm. And um, when I went back to school, I tried to keep playing basketball. 
Uh, but I also started taking music classes. And then when I had to stop playing basketball, the doctor was like, you just can't do it. You physically can't do it anymore. And so on the way home from the doctor's office, I went by a guitar center, which is like the music store. And I uh, bought a little DJ controller Great. and spent the entire summer also watching YouTube and learning how to do that. And then I went back to school, first week of school, senior year, before I met Sophie. Okay. I DJed uh, the swimmer's house party <laughs> at wow. school. That was my first ever gig. And uh, <laughs> I just started getting asked to DJ the next day for all these other parties. Do you still miss uh, the, 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 the courts and, and the games? Yeah, I love yeah. basketball. Yeah. Great, yeah. great. What's what's your your uh, relationship off stage? You guys like help each other with the daily stuff, uh, give advice to each other, or is like no, totally separate lives. You know, we're just gonna see each other on stage. No, we live yeah, together. We literally choose to live together, oh, which is, this is great, crazy. <laughs> People are like, wait, what? But it just it's more fun. We get more done. We love to work. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I also feel like the same thing that I described with the music where it's like we can be so brutally honest with mm -hmm. each other. Like I feel that I can be so brutally honest about who I am, what I'm thinking, like literally everything that happens <laughs> <laughs> because I just I trust like that you love me and, and will be there for me even yeah. if I say the craziest thing possible thing on my mind yeah and, and i can like be that. so brutally honest when she <laughs> when she comes out of a room with a horrible outfit on you know really? yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> just kind of a friend okay. yeah okay yeah but so it's amazing <laughs> guys well and there's a bunch of work just like you said because you guys not only worked on uh, uh, musical projects but uh at, with the movie uh, movie soundtracks as well right Yeah, we've we've had some songs placed in some awesome movies. Yeah. What's the the, the, the difference creating songs for the dance floor, or for the radio and stuff, and for the movies? Honestly, it's what I described earlier, which is that we make music for ourselves in the moment, mm -hmm. rather than being like, oh, we're gonna make a song like for a movie scene. It's like we'll make the song that we feel like making, yeah. based on whatever is happening inside of us and our mood and our references, whatever, like what we're inspired by, and then. A movie will reach out and be like, hey, can we use this song for this scene? And we'll be like, great, yeah, perfect. But it, I think that direction always works the best because, again, we're mm -hmm. making it really for us and what we, what is moving us. This is perfect. And uh, it caught to our attention that during the, the, quarantine, uh, the quarantine, you guys turned your live performances into daily live streams. How was it to you guys and to your audience? That was a special time for us. It, we found out... Our tour had been canceled, that we were going to be stuck at home for a long time, which we hadn't really been home in like four years, really. Like, we, you know, we toured 10 months out of the year, basically. So, so we were really like kind of confused and scared, just like everyone else in the world. And that first day we found out, we used a, the live stream on Instagram, like you just did, <laughs> for the first time we'd ever used it. And we live streamed me DJing and Sophie working out. <laughs> and so many people got on it. I think also because, you know, everyone was home from work. You know, there was nothing going on. And then we said, you know what, we'll do this the next, we'll do this again tomorrow. This was so fun. So we did it again the next day. And then the third day, Sophie joined me DJing because she didn't want to just keep working out on camera. She needed a day off. I was tired, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, My glutes and, were sore. And on a whim, while on live stream, I said, you know what, we'll do this every day until we're all back to work. And I thought it would be a couple weeks, you know, a uh, month or something. So then like 300 days later, yeah. and now we're, you know, we have this camera set up uh -huh. and we're on Twitch and we're on Instagram and we're on TikTok and we have a whole back, you know, we just kept building it up and yeah. it kept growing and there was, you know, 40, 50, 60,000 people watching every day and it just grew into this amazing thing that people could grab onto when they needed some structure in their day or they needed something to look forward to. And we just became so close with people all over the world. This is great. And tell us about the carnival here in Brazil because, well, it's a, it's a huge uh, event we have every year here in Brazil, um, you know, all over the country. And you guys have been here this, this year, right? How, how was this experience? 
It was so cool. We were on a trio elettrico. Yeah. And uh, does this have a translation for English? Because I never, I never knew how to say that. No. No, we don't have them. No. We don't have. Them. It'd be like a float in a parade slash giant concert. Okay. With a bunch of speakers and a million people. <laughs> there's, there's no it's way. It's a long it's word. Like yeah. Two none of those. In one word, none right? of those things exist. None of those. Oh. Yeah, so, it was amazing. And, I mean, but how was it, please? It was. It was really crazy. There were just so many people and they were, da- again, it's like they're the Brazilians, they're down to party and celebrate, yeah. you know? They're yeah. just there with it, in it. And uh, yeah, it was really fun. It was really, really and, fun. And for you, Tucker. So special. Our, so our special. craziness somehow scared you. Oh, I love, I know I love, <laughs> I love Brazil. I just love the people. I love the enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. It was one of my favorite DJ sets. I, th- I remember right after we played, I said to Sophie, I said, all the DJ sets we've yeah. been playing, like in Las Vegas lately, we have a residency there. Okay. I was like, it's just been practice for this. You know, like yeah. this is the... the This is for real. Yeah, yeah. like everyone appreciated each yeah. song choice and I felt appreciated deciding what song to play. You know, so it was so right? cool. It was this so, is cool. so great. It was so cool. And uh, did you have any uh, hiccups during the live gig? Just like the sound cut out or the monitor stopped working, something like that? Yeah, we've had the sound totally cut out before really? where we've just, we stood on stage and we had everyone sing like a cappella with us for <laughs> yeah. 30 minutes. Oh yeah, goodness. that was stressful. Berlin. <laughs> Berlin, that was crazy. And then. I I broke my foot on stage one you time, broke. and I had to just keep going. I sat down. Yeah, I broke my foot. She was like crying slash singing. Yeah, but the crowd like and loved it. We should do it more. I just often. sat. Oh, no, we should do it more often. No. Oh my goodness. No, thank you. I'm not sacrificing my body again. Thank you next. Tucker can do it. Tucker can break his foot this time. My, yeah, now it's your turn. Now it's your turn. Now I'm good. But did you did you realize uh, you know in, in in the moment that. That she, she broke? The- no, I thought, I I remember it was after our song Best Friend. Uh, well, I realized it during because yeah, she yeah, wasn't was like doing before. the dance. Okay. And I was like looking over like, we've done this song a billion times. Yeah. I know you know the dance. But why are you doing it? Yeah. And I like, I think I even walked over and I was like, you're fine. Suck it up. You're fine. Because <laughs> we were in Australia in some place in front of a ton of people, like a big festival. Uh-huh. And then, then... I was just like, I'm not fine. Like, I really can't do the dance. Then like, I realized I was really, she was really, not fine. Yeah. And I was realizing it slowly because, like, adrenaline. Like, it, it, I just knew that I couldn't put weight on it Yeah. without, like, toppling over. Yeah, and sure. so I was like... And so I was kind of trying to figure out how to do the dance, and then I couldn't really do it. So then, I, and then I was like, "Oh, this In is pain. bad." And then I was like, "Oh, this is actually really bad." And then I'm like realizing, realizing throughout the song, you know, I'm singing it, I'm like smiling to the, and then I'm like, "Oh my god, this is I I can't anymore," you know. And then so I just I was yeah. like this, and then they brought uh, like I just sat down and okay. played the rest of the the show sitting down. <laughs> but but you you did you, you kept going until the end. Yeah, yeah we finished yeah. the set. Crazy. We might have cu- we might have <laughs> cut like one song, but she she yeah. played the whole thing. I was just crying. I, I thought like, she yeah. was just being dramatic. Okay. And I was like, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Okay. So and we we know that you guys have a huge background of uh, of um, uh, activism, working with institutions like National Alliance on Mental Illness and National Resources Defense Council. Uh, how your uh, activism impacts on your music? Actually, one of the things that we're doing right now is directly in Brazil. We have a project called the Unendangered Forest. And basically, we're working in a place called Mojetis, um in the Atlantic Rainforest. And we are planting endangered species of trees. So we, they find the seedlings, they distribute them around to, to properties that you know are willing to take care of these trees. And then hopefully we take them off the endangered species list. Okay, this is so great. And this is something that, that uh, is, is, is part of you since the beginning. This, we love trees, song. yes. <laughs> since the very beginning. No, like honestly, like all of our like visual references has, yeah. has all been like very tropical, 
very tree based okay. <laughs> imagery, a very sort of Brazilian rainforest. Like that's the environment that I think speaks to us the most. Perfect. So yeah, it makes a lot of sense for us for a lot of reasons. <laughs> Great. And how the fashion word uh, world inspires the band? Because we know they have this, the brand wet tannies, that's it. Uh, and uh, how, how does fashion uh, resonates with, with you and with your music? A ton. I, yeah. I've always been inspired by it. Sophie's really gotten into it also, and it's been so much fun. You wouldn't know just because I'm wearing our merch because I have no clean clothes right now. But <laughs> <laughs> Tour life is tough for fashion sometimes. Yeah, Because you uh, can only bring so many shoes. Uh-huh. You know, it's like I don't the, you only have a small bag. I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's something we definitely like love and have leaned into more and have done some fashion campaigns and and really you know get inspired by shapes and cuts and and pushing the boundaries of you know femininity and masculinity and oh, right. and all sorts of things like that it's, it's been really fun the wet tennis pants for instance like we have a couple different cut of pants but there are these one pants that i've been wearing on stage for years mm -hmm. and i just love them so much it's like just been my staple yeah. and so we made them in three different colors and now like going around the world and seeing people wearing the pants oh, like great. it kind of it has that same feeling to me of when you're somewhere and you hear our song and then people yeah. are I'm like because oh, yeah, it makes people really happy like these pants are like really colorful like silky flowy pants and like people right. wear them when they're gonna go out and have a good time like they're like party pants you know <laughs> so it's been party so pants. satisfying to watch people like put our party <laughs> pants on <laughs> i love that i love that I really love that. I, I made party pants too. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. I did. It's true. They have yeah. flames up the whole side. They're kind of like the Dickies, uh -huh. but like a little wider and have flames up the whole side. Wow. They're really fun. I should have worn them today. <laughs> yeah, sure. They're dirty. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I, do, I, I don't blame you all, so I know you guys are, 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 are touring. It's <laughs> like traveling a lot. And you guys remember the first contact you had with music, the first album that you've listened to? First contact with music. Yeah. First uh, contact with music. I Ooh. just remember listening to my parents play a lot of like disco, like chic and stuff what? like that so good, in the right? car. Yeah. Just like funky fun, like war, like, you know, play that funky music, white boy, mm. like old, she's a brick house. Yeah. All, yeah. All these like that. Uh-huh. I, so my dad recently told me that the the song that he sang to me when I was born was What a Wonderful World by Louis Armstrong. Wow. And we actually made a cover of that song recently. This is great. Uh, on our last album. And Neat. Yeah, I, I guess that was my first contact with music. Must have been. So about still about uh, Brazilian culture, do you have a uh, favorite food that you like? Picadinho. Actually, we also... I love a picadinho. <laughs> although I do it without the egg on top. Okay. But I love farofa. Farofa How picadinho. did I live without farofa for so long? And it's like, but it, you, you take some with you to to, to America when you when, when you can. Do, no, or but no, I eat an acai bowl every single day. Acai bowl. We just came from eating acai. Okay, Stay. this is a Stay this is a daily acai. thing. This is a a rule. This is like we <laughs> have to have acai bowls every day. And for you, it's also picadinho, no? No, I like it, but yeah. I honestly one of the things that I'm obsessed with is tapioca. And I don't understand why other pe places don't have tapioca. It's interesting, right? It's so right? good. It's so yeah. it's so simple. You can put anything in it. Yeah. Like, what? It's light. I, it's light. It's, it's gluten like free. A like, like a it's tapioca. it's perfect. It's the perfect little like snack. Oh, okay. And it's still about uh, uh, your uh, uh, offstage relationship. Do you guys have fun together? Go to clubs. You know, have fun just like with friends. Invite everybody. And yeah, that's the vibe. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's our life. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> It's fun. We love having the whole, you know, the gang together and when we can get friends from all over the place in one place and just have fun. We were just talking about a, a birthday weekend we're going to do for Sophie in uh, Las Vegas because we're playing EDC Las Vegas the same weekend as her birthday. And wow. Oh, That's going to be super fun. Super fun. I was like, can we have a party? And he was like, yeah, of course. I was like, good, because I already invited Vegas. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now rapid fire question. So a dream. A dream? Yeah. Like in general, any in dream? General, yeah. A dream. Tucker, a dream. it's with you now. Wait, like... <laughs> 
a dream when you I'm have, sleeping? I want to no, like to a dream. Some... What's a dream? Oh, a goal. Like, I was yeah, like, oh my god, what did I dream about last night? No, no, it's oh. like a dream. Oh. Like, I can't you say, say that do? on radio. What do you want to do? Last night, you know, I had this crazy dream. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> <laughs> a dream we have. Oh, uh, oh my God! I just, I, I'm obsessed with Gilberto Gil and Gaetano Veloso. I want to meet them. I want to make music with them. This is like my dream. Great. Yours? Mm, that sounds cool. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, I got one. Huh. I want to play in the NBA Celebrity All-Star Basketball Game. Wow. That's it. So, an idol. Oh, that's funny. I already answered that one. Yeah, okay. Larry Bird. Something that you enjoy, but no one knows. People know a lot about <laughs> that me. That you can say on Radio Disney. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Think twice. Think twice. Oh. Uh, Something let me that see. I enjoy that nobody knows. Pickleball. Mm. Mm, Have nice. you ever played pickleball? No. Nice. What is it? It's huh. like tennis, but it's with like a wiffle ball okay. and like paddles. And it's a little smaller court. It's okay. like big Table, ping like, pong almost. Okay. No, but it's like a... Full court? court, yeah. Oh, Pickleball, fun. Interesting. It'll get Ooh, here. Okay, it's this good. is okay, yeah. it's good. Spre get spreadsheets. Here. Spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. Spreadsheets. Yep. But but I'm dead serious. Oh. Really? But oh my god, I love like, spreadsheets. Love, I love really? doing them. Yeah. Interesting. Like, like I what, have. What's the word? How would you say spreadsheets? Uh. No, but it's no, no, no. It's precious. Like the it's just things you 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 write down, right? Yeah, para organizar. Yeah, para organizar. Like, like these ones you are. Yeah, it's like uh, tabellas. Like, like work. Like it's horrible yeah. organizing work. Yeah, an organizer I love, or something like that. Love. Inter this is so interesting. What this a crazy so answer. But this is so. But this is. It brings great. me so much this joy. A movie. A movie. Uh huh. I want to see Dune too. Okay. Oh, but I haven't seen it yet. Me too. I, but that's the first movie thing that came to mind. Yeah. But it might not. I mean, I don't know if it's good. I just want to see it. I I, I want to see. I it heard also. it's good. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> I feel like every movie I see, I'm like, oh my god, that was the best movie I've ever seen. <laughs> so what's the last, I always am like that. That's movie? what I'm thinking. What's the last movie? I've been watching Succession, which is a show. Okay. So I've just been doing that for a while now. Okay. And it's amazing. It's, really it's amazing. And that doesn't answer the question. I know. What was the last movie I saw? <laughs> can we just pick a movie, please? You Why you're whispering to me? I did watch Saltburn. I mean, wow. Disney uh, Channel, guys. That's it. Disney this Channel. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> um. Oh my gosh. That's fine. Salt okay, Eagle Succession. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm cheating. I accept that. I accept that. But now a Disney movie. <laughs> oh my god, we just the saw Little the Little Mermaid. Mermaid. We just watched like the new one. It's so beautiful. We went with our dancers on tour, and there was no one else in the theater, and we were running around <laughs> like during we the were songs, doing interpretive like dance. under yeah. the sea. We were like, <laughs> like popping yeah. up in all different places. That was oh, so fun. This, this yeah. is great. Yeah. Okay, so the last rapid fire question: a Brazilian artist. A Brazilian yeah. artist. Oh, that's so hard. We have okay, so I'm gonna many. today. I will. I will choose Silva. Silva. Yeah, oh, he's amazing. I'll yeah. choose Lineker. Also sweetest Lineker. person. Also sweetest person. Yeah, great, we love great. Him. Now, once we're here, of course, on Radio Disney Brazil, I have just to ask you if you could choose a Disney movie to have created the soundtrack for. Which one would have a bane? Oh, I mean, Lion King is very special. Okay, gotta be Lion but King. But Elton John did that. I mean. Elton John. Elton I wouldn't want to take. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to change the music because it's such good music. You yeah. Know? But I do wish that I had written it. <laughs> to be part it. of it. To be part of. Right? But I wouldn't touch it. It's perfect. Okay. It is. That's that is the best. That's it. That's probably the yeah. best. That's got to be one of the best music yeah. movie music ever. Great. So guys, thanks. Thanks for being here with us. It was a great pleasure to talk to you guys. Please, this is your house. So come visit us again and again and again. Thank you. <laughs> Obrigada. Thanks. Obrigado. Obrigado.